Hi guys, so it is Tuesday and I recently redid my living room yesterday mainly because I have a big window right over here and I originally had my computer back there which meant that anytime I was on my computer I had to close the blinds otherwise there was a lot of glare and it was really bright on my screen and I couldn't see anything so during the day I always had my blinds closed instead of letting all this natural daylight in so now that I flipped it around, it feels so much nicer. Um, I'm facing the window, so even though I do have monitors in the way, if I want to just look out, I'm kind of <laughs> sort of still having some views. Um, I have my meeting soon, my team meeting for work, but my lens rental finally arrived. I needed to be home to sign for it. And then after my team meeting, I am getting my second COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, I chose to get Pfizer. For the first shot, I didn't really get sick or anything. Uh, my arm was just sore for maybe 12 hours. I started feeling it the night after I got the shot, so just overnight and a little bit into the next day, but nothing else. And here we have Riley happily chewing a beef marrow bone. So those were always her favorite, and I really do enjoy giving her raw bones. So what I noticed is that her nails are a little too long and I need to trim them down again. Yeah, so beef marrow bones have always been her favorite things to chew. I don't like buying her toys because she loses interest in them very quickly. She chews them for like maybe 20 minutes on the first day because she's excited for the new toy. But then after that, she just doesn't care about it. And then it's kind of just sitting there lying and being a waste. And plus, she likes to chew. So ideally, if I give her something, she would be chewing it for a while, right? But nothing keeps her occupied like these. She enjoys them for two hours, which is a really, really long time. So it's very hot today. And instead of having her do the traditional physical activity, this is still fairly draining for her. But holy crap, I am seeing how long her nails are and definitely need to clip them. Okay, I took it out of the box. And for some reason, this thing keeps falling down. That's why I have my foot there holding it. But it came in this container. All right, so the one that I ordered is 70 millimeters to 300 millimeters, which is half the size of the one that I got in Montana. That one I got 100 to 400 and it was huge. So this is it. I'm so glad it's so much smaller. Um, let me see. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a lock on it. That would have been very helpful for my 100 to 400 because it was so heavy that anytime I was holding it down like this, the lens would just drop because of the weight. But there's a lock for it. Okay, okay. All right, I am excited. Maybe I'll test it out a little bit in my house, like take a picture of my cats from over here while Milo's over there doing shady things but my meeting is starting, so I'm so glad to receive this because yeah, I've been fucking feeling like I need to hole up at my house because I needed to sign for it or more like I needed to show my ID for it, so I'm excited to take pictures of horses with this. All right, hi, it's Thursday and tomorrow I leave for my SLO San Luis Obispo trip to see wild horses on a photo safari. Um, I think I'm gonna try to pack today. I'm not staying for very long. I extended my trip to leave on Monday instead of Sunday because it's a holiday on Monday and I had no idea. I've got my bike back there. I might consider biking a little bit in Santee or I'll just take a walk, but um, it was quite a hassle to get it into my car, so I might as well use it one more time, put it in my garage, and then I'll set up the crate for tomorrow. I'm probably going to leave um, later in the afternoon. I don't think I can check into my Airbnb anyways until 4 p.m., so leaving in the afternoon is fine. I just hope I don't really run into too much traffic, but actually I might run into some rush hour, who knows? I don't know about going north. All right, I am done with my bike ride and I am about to pick up some hibachi steakhouse. I've been really, really, really enjoying this hibachi shrimp from a local restaurant. It comes with zucchini, mushrooms, onions, uh, shrimp, of course. 
rice, um, salad, soup, it comes with a lot for the price. So I am just gonna give it a little bit more time before I pick it up because I just called it in. So I wanna take this time to talk a bit about my current situation because um, it has changed quite a bit and I am still kind of adjusting to it. So Jose has been a really big part of my life for over a year now and he recently moved back to San Jose. So he was somebody that I spent so much time with, I spoke to all the time and I had the best time with. Um, he is my ex-boyfriend, my latest, and we didn't date for very long. I, I guess I can say maybe we dated for, hmm, nine months or so? Eight to nine months, I don't even remember exact dates because I'm not really a date person, but even after we stopped being together, we would still spend a lot of time together and um, he is someone that's really, really important to me. But I guess just my experience with him has really just taught me more and supported the fact that who I spend my time with um, really matters to me. So what I'm basically trying to say is I am totally happy being by myself as usual, but if the right person is around for me to spend time with, then that enhances the experience. And I feel that way more in particular to him because I just knew that um, when I would spend time with him, I would always be laughing, always, always be laughing. I would feel loose, very open and felt like I could behave in any manner that I wanted. The strangest, most random things I could say or do and I wouldn't care because we would just be joking around together. I'm doing a really poor job of explaining this, but what I'm trying to say is just, I don't want to spend time with anybody unless I can feel that way. So I have been pretty rigid about who I spend my time with because there would be times where I would be hanging out with someone, but I wouldn't be having that much fun. I would just feel kind of detached, um, disengaged. I wouldn't even want to have conversations sometimes. And uh, I just feel like I've been more accepting of the fact that, yeah, who I spend my time with is really important because I know that there's a lot of people out there that feel lonely very easily, very commonly. I don't know. I am just um, feeling very comfortable with myself in knowing that unless I can feel that way with somebody and feel like really happy, having a lot of fun, laughing all the time, then I don't want to spend time with you because then I'd rather just be by myself otherwise. But lately it has been um, challenging at times, of course. For the most part, I would say that I'm still feeling very good, I'm still very happy with my life, and I'm still enjoying myself. It's just that occasionally when I go out and I do something in a location, where we would spend a lot of time together, um, it can still be emotional for me because I am doing the activity alone and we would do those things together frequently enough for the location or the activity to remind me of him constantly. So that will of course fade over time but I've been going to Santee. I just rode my bike in one of our favorite neighborhoods. We would always go there to bike or to walk. And um, Blossom Valley also was somewhere that I showed him later on that he really liked. I would say that he is actually the single person who I have spent the most time with as an adult. I actually feel like that's true, even over like my boyfriend before him who I dated for longer, but I just feel like after Jose moved here, we saw each other so frequently, and my last boyfriend, he lived like 40 minutes away or something, so maybe I only saw him on weekends, something like that, but I really just feel like he has been 
one of the most impactful figures in my life as an adult. Um, He is someone who was very, very different from any previous boyfriend. All of my previous boyfriends stemmed from gaming, so we always had that activity to share together. But me and Jose, gaming was a bit more of a challenge because we never played the same genre. We did play some FPS Valorant together, and that was mostly stressful for me because I was a beginner at PC FPS, so I was completely new and played horribly, understandably. And uh, we did still have our differences at the time when we were playing, so it didn't always go very smoothly. So he has largely been pretty different from anyone that I've ever been with. And that wasn't something that deterred me because I kind of saw it as, let's try somebody that's not who I typically date. And um, I kind of welcomed the challenge and seeing whether it would force me to see things in a different perspective. I don't know. But um, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a new period for me where I'm readjusting to being in San Diego by myself again. And I want to remind everybody that I'm not saying that as a negative thing. Being by yourself is not a negative thing. If you are somebody like me who really, really thrives off of just deciding what you do with your time. Every time I am deciding the next thing that I do, I do have that excitement. It's like, oh, do I want to watch a movie? Do I want to go for a motorcycle ride? Do I want to work out? Do I want to do something with Riley? Do I want a game? So yes, a lot of my days and a lot of my activities are very repetitive, very, very, very repetitive. But for some reason, I am not often bored by my options. I'm still really excited. Um, I love living here. The weather here makes me very happy, puts me in a good mood all the time. And I go on my trip tomorrow, so I am beyond excited for that tomorrow. I actually get the feeling that my trip tomorrow might surpass my Colorado, Wyoming, Montana road trip, just because I feel like I've been downplaying how exciting this photo safari would actually be for me. I love, love horses. I love watching them, looking at them. And then this time we're going to be on acres and acres and acres of land. Just a few people. I think it's like up to four people that bought tickets and then the guide. And we're just going to be there looking at herds of horses. There will be randomization in terms of whether a horse will approach you or whether we have to take pictures from afar. But I am really looking forward to it. It's going to be on Saturday and it's going to start around 3 p.m. And then uh, and I think just around sunrise, uh, sorry, sunset. So um, definitely going to be documenting it. My lens already arrived, so everything's all set. So now I would say my food should be ready. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because um, I've been having some thoughts about just I'm alone again. That thought has been popping up a lot for me, but I don't like that I've been thinking that way just because sometimes when I think of that term, I feel like the world has made alone seem so bad but it really isn't. Alone again for me is just like kind of going back into a routine where I will no longer have somebody to spend my time with in person anymore. But that is something that I'm very, very used to. So I'm sure I will get used to it just fine. But he was just a very special individual who was so much fun. (laughs) We had so many inside jokes and we just laughed all the time. It was so much joy and fun 